Hi guys and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Richard and my channel is all about men's fashion, men's lifestyle and also from time to time I do product reviews. So hopefully you'll like what you see here and if you do, I'd really appreciate it if you consider supporting this channel by smashing that subscribe button and also hitting that notification bell to the bottom right hand side of this video so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video, which currently is twice weekly on Tuesday and Thursday. I also am prevalent on the web and social media and I'll put the links in the description below to those, I won't bore you with it now, but I really hope that you like what you see and that this video will help you some way and you find it useful. Today's video topic is about how to travel lightly um, when traveling, going away for a short weekend or short break, visiting friends um, and giving you a few tips and hints on how I manage to pack light but still have enough items of clothing to build uh, a decent wardrobe of outfits for each situation whilst away. Hopefully you'll find it useful and all of that is coming up after the intro. Hello guys, welcome back. And as I said to you at the beginning, before the intro, today's video is about packing, uh, uh, more specifically how to pack lightly and use versatile pieces of clothing to mix together to make uh, an array of outfits which will take you from a lunch uh, to coffee with your friends or a more um, smarter event, so say a family meal, etc. Before I do that, I just want to say that if you are regular to my video channel, you'll notice that I'm in a different setting today. Um, unfortunately, guys, that is due to circumstances out of my control. Um, I couldn't get home to my um, my home studio, so unfortunately, I've had to record this somewhere else. So hopefully, the video and the audio quality isn't too bad. Uh, if it is, I apologise profusely. This will be a short video, uh, so please bear with me. Um, there are several items which I'm going to mention in this video, some of which I'm wearing now and some of which I'm not, so I'm going to put those in between uh, as we talk and go along so you get a visual idea of what uh, sort of items that I took with me. Now I've just returned yesterday evening um, from a flight to uh, Northern Ireland, a short trip. Um, I left on Thursday back on Monday yesterday um, to visit a very good friend of mine who lives in Northern Ireland. I knew um, that we'd be hanging out, going for coffee, and also we'd be going for a few meals. So um, obviously I wanted to pack uh, smartly, so I had enough um, clothing to take me from one set into the other. So obviously, um, when I got back, I thought to myself, well, I'll do a video on this subject, because I know there are some of you out there, let me just adjust the camera. There are some of you out there that still don't know exactly uh, what sort of items to take, or you pack too much, or you pack too little, um, which means that when you're out there, you then end up spending money to buy something else because you run out of items to wear. So I thought I'd do this very quick video and just tell you what I did from my personal experience. Um, now, first of all, let's start off with uh, luggage. Now, if you're going away for a weekend, and I've done a video on this previously about what you need to take, like a weekender or a duffel bag. Now, I've taken duffel bags before, um, but this time I took um, my specific um, sort of travel stroke um, cabin size bag, if you like. Uh, a cabin bag is obviously a bag which you would take on board uh, to an airplane cabin. This is handy for a short break for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it means you don't have to worry about going and checking in and standing in queue um, and taking your other luggage, which is eventually going to go down into the um, holding area in the uh, the plane. Uh, and secondly, now like I say, you don't need a lot, so it allows you to pack light, carry it around light, um, and it will fit in the luggage compartment above your head in the cabin of the airplane. Now, there are certain restrictions on what size luggage that you can take on board, so I do advise you if you are going to go away for a short trip to make sure that the bag that you've got fits those requirements. Otherwise, you can have an embarrassing moment when you try and get it on the plane. It doesn't fit in one of their um, sort of... Uh, boxes they've got when you walk in to make sure your bag fits. If it doesn't, you're going to end up having to pay an extra £50 for um, a holding area uh, to put your bag in. So if I you, I'll get this right. If you haven't got a bag that fits the requirements, then make sure that you go and get one. Now the bags um, vary from size to size on certain si uh, certain sort of um, airlines. Some airlines uh, take into account the weight of it and they give you a weight restriction, um, but not all do. So. Just as a rough ballpark figure, I'm going to look down at my notes now and um, I've done some research and basically the majority of the airlines in the UK and throughout the world, I believe, um, want your cabin bag, uh, that is your carry-on bag. So when I refer to cabin bag, I mean the bag that you're going to carry on uh, to your seat and put in the luggage compartment above you. Um, it's got to be a size of 56 times 55, uh, sorry, 56 times 45 times 25 centimeters and that is your bag dimensions and they're the numbers um, that you're going to need when you're looking for a bag that's going to pass um, 
the test for most airlines. Um, so the bag that I took was um, from a British brand called Antler, A-N-T-L-E-R, and I'll put a link down below uh, for that bag. And also it was from their Urbanite connection. Now this bag, and I'll show you some photos in a moment as well, um, is really handy because it's got a nice deep luggage compartment bit in the middle and there's lots of zip pockets out on the outside for you to put things you're gonna be needing access to on a regular basis, like your passport, your wallet, your sunglasses, um, and in my case a charger for the phone. I was sat around in the airport lounge for about three hours at Manchester in between on both flights um, so quite a long delay and obviously uh, I needed access to my headphones, my phone and my charger. Um, so it's a really handy bag, really practical, plenty of room in there. Moving on to what I took. Now it is difficult for a lot of guys to pick the separates to put together to build um, several different outfits. Obviously you don't want to be out there wearing the same item of clothing every day. So you want to take a few separates, very versatile pieces that all mix together to make several different outfits to take you from sightseeing to lunch to coffee and out for a nice meal. Um, when you want to make that little bit more of an effort and when you know you're going to be seeing people, you want to obviously look and feel your best. Um, the way that I did this and the way that I normally do this is to choose a colour palette um, which complements each other. So for instance, um, on this trip, I stuck with three colours. That was black, white and grey. Now, all of those pieces um, sort of interchange. So depending on the climate, whether or not it rained or got cold and I could ex add extra layers, everything worked together. And that allowed me to pack very light and I'll go over those items with you in a second. Now, I'll start with jackets because if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know they're my favorite item of clothing. Um, and I took two jackets. Now I took this jacket, which is a leather cafe racer style jacket. Um, it's a really nice slim fitting jacket, which um, looks really cool. Um, and obviously when I'm traveling, you still don't want to forget your style. So this is what I wore pretty much uh, to the airport. Um, it was this cafe racer jacket, um, this hoodie, which I'll refer to again in, in a little bit, and this jumper with a white t-shirt underneath. Um, I wore that with a pair of black um, slim fit jeans. And again, uh, that'll form part of what I packed and I'll explain that in a moment. The second jacket that I wore, and hopefully this picture will come up very shortly, um, was a black packable Ralph Lauren RLX down jacket. Now a down jacket, and especially a packable one, is an essential, guys. If you're going anywhere for the weekend, whether or not you think it's going to get a little bit on the chillier side or going to rain or not, it's always best to own and pack um, a down bag, um, a down jacket in a bag. Now I take this with me everywhere because essentially it has been a lifesaver on more than one occasion. I wore it two out of the four days that was out there. It packs into a nice bag, um, which you can just put to the bottom of your bag, um, your travel bag, and you know you've got it there if the weather changes. So I had this jacket and the uh, packable down um, hooded jacket, which I'll show you in a second. Second thing that I decided to take were t-shirts. Now, obviously these things are essential. I go on about it quite a lot on my site and also on my Instagram page. Um, but I do love a good well-fitted t-shirt. Now the three colours that I took, one black, one grey and one white. Now that's probably more than I needed to take, but they're very light, they're very small, they don't take up a lot of room in your bag and it gives you the option there. And obviously if it gets cold, you can layer a couple on underneath. So I took three of those, one in each colour, which obviously as you'll appreciate, all of those would have worked with what I'm wearing at the moment. I also took a long sleeve uh, white Henley from Polo Ralph Lauren, which Again, I'll show you now. That uh, gave me an extra layer um, and a bit more of an interest. Now, I love to wear Henley's underneath a hoodie and a leather jacket because I think it's really masculine. It's a great top um, and it bridges that gap between t-shirt and polo shirt, which is obviously on the smarter end of the t-shirt scale. So all in all, I took four t-shirts, so one long sleeve white Henley and three short sleeve slim fitting t-shirts. Now moving on, I took one sweater, uh, that was this, which is a Levi's woolen um, crew neck jumper. It's just um, thin enough that I can wear it under a slim fitting jacket and hoodie to add that extra layer of warmth, um, but it's not too hot. Um, also, it pairs really well with the other t-shirts that I took, so that's why I took this, but it was only the one, um, and that's all you need for a short trip. Following on from that, I took two hoodies. Now this black one that I said here, and when I just wanted to change up the look slightly, I took a grey hoodie as well, which again works well with everything that I've already discussed beforehand. The next thing I took 
with two pairs of trousers. Now I took a pair of slim fit black Levi's 512 taper fit jeans, which I wore on the airplane um, for the next day that I was there. And that sort of took me from sightseeing to coffee to just hanging out with my friend and his family. And I also took a smarter pair of gray slim fit Levi's chinos, which I'll link to and show you in the picture as well in a moment. That allowed me to dress up my outfit slightly. It was on the slightly smarter side. So if we went out for a meal, which we did, um, then that obviously served that purpose there. Um, in addition to that, and moving on, I took one smart dress shirt in black, a nice slim fit in black shirt, which I paired with the chinos for a night out. Two belts I took. Uh, the first one for the casual um, hanging around in the airport and um, for just chilling was uh, a Polo Ralph Lauren uh, red and black stripe D-ring belt with black hardware. And I'll show you that picture very shortly. Um, I used that just for sort of hanging around and it added that extra pop of color with the black, the gray and the white. And again, it all works really well because um, there's a thick black stripe um, going through that belt. So it just added that extra layer of color with that flash of red, just to add an interest and a bit of pop of color. Um, for the more formal and smarter occasions, I took a black leather belt. Um, it's actually a black reversible belt. I couldn't find a picture of that one online. So the picture that I'm gonna show you in a minute is pretty much similar in color um, and, and buckle style uh, to the one I took. And I paired that with the black dress shirt, um, my gray chinos, and I popped this uh, over the top without a hoodie, this jacket, and it smartened it up. Because the good thing about leather cafe racer jackets is they're very versatile, and you can keep them casual, or you can dress them up with a suit, shirt and tie. It's an awesome look, so that, that look worked really well. Um, I also took, and I won't show you this, just a, a, a grey scarf. Uh, you can get them anywhere, but it just added that extra layer, obviously of warmth, but also it's nice to accessorise sometimes um, by, uh, by taking a scarf with you. And obviously I took my trusty Ray-Ban aviators as well. I don't go anywhere without those. Um, everyone knows what Ray-Ban aviators are, so I won't bore you with that. But I took my Ray-Ban aviators and a nice uh, grey lanthorn scarf. Um, I also took one pair of boots. Now these pair of boots are very, very versatile and the reason I took them is because they work with everything. They're a pair of dark grey, they almost look black, but they are actually dark grey River Island uh, boots with sort of a fake fur lining if you like. Um, and obviously they're warm, um, they're comfortable, they look great. And the good thing about them is they've got a very formal toe. I wouldn't say they're not like a brogue, they're like a, if you can imagine like a, a pair of formal shoes and you've got the, the um, the toe bit at the end, it's got those on it. So they look classic with a pair of jeans and chi um, chinos, so you can dress them down with t-shirts, etc. But they look awesome as a sort of formal shoe when you're wearing it with a pair of chinos or more formal trousers with the shirt, etc. So they work for all different events that I went to out there. So I only had to take one pair of shoes. And again, this is good because you don't want the shoes, which are usually a heavy item weighing down your bag. Um, you don't want to be lugging it around with you for hours at the airport and you certainly don't want to be trying to squeeze it in um, to the luggage compartment above your head in the plane. And also, if it fails the luggage uh, weight test, and shoes do usually do if you take two or more pairs, then you're gonna end up paying that extra holding fee, which obviously no one wants. Um, so essentially, guys, I took one pair of shoes, I wore them the whole time, um, so they weren't taking up luggage space and they worked for all eventualities when I was out there. So as you can see, just versatile pieces that all work together um, to make um, basically a weekend's worth, or four days worth in my case, of, of outfits. Um, so that's the way to go. And obviously you're gonna be taking clean underwear, socks, boxes, etc. so that's four pairs of each, uh, and you're completely covered. Now, just very briefly um, on, um, on packing as well. One thing I didn't take this time, but I have done before, um, is a really, really great product from a brand called Bago, or Bago, um, I don't know how you pronounce it. But essentially, these are travel packing cubes. Um, you buy them in, in um, threes and fours, um, and essentially, they are little zippable bags. Um, you can get whatever colour you want to go along with your, um, with your packing. Um, and essentially, you would pack in, say, for instance, your trousers in one, your t-shirts in the other and your underwear in the third, and then they go into your bag um, as little cubes. So not only does it keep everything organized, which if you're like me, um, you're quite anal about those sort of things, um, but when you get to your hotel room, wherever you're staying, you can literally just take your cubes out of your travel bag, put them in the drawers there, and so you know where everything is. They are an absolutely brilliant and priceless 
a bit of kit. Um, I bought mine years ago and I do use them quite regularly. I just couldn't put my hands on them this, this time, unfortunately. But they're great as well. When you, um, if you've got some washing that you need to sort out when you get home, you can put a washing in one as well so you know what pile needs washing uh, and what bits you haven't used by putting them in the other. It's just organisational uh, sense really, guys. So I'll put um, an image of that in a moment so you know what I'm talking about. But I do recommend you go and get those. Um, they really are great. Um, one more thing as well, just about taking the stress out of travel. What I noticed, um, and I've noticed this a, a few times when I've gone away, is the stress that travel can um, can put on you. And I don't mean rushing to get there, etc. although that is part of it. But essentially, it's the, the whole process of going through security, having to take your shoes off, your belt off, your watch off, uh, have your bag rifle through, etc. There are ways um, to make the whole thing less stressful. And starting with timing, make sure that you get to your check-in an hour and a half at least uh, before your flight. Um, it helps as well. Many airlines now do their own um, airline app on the uh, iPhone um, for, or, and also for um, Android phones where you can check in up to 24 hours before your flight. That saves you an awful lot of time because all you have to do is turn up with your hold all, go to one of the um, staff there and show them your app. Or you can scan it on um, handheld scanners there, straight through the door, straight into departure. Um, and it just saves a lot of time and stress. You've got one cabin bag, you've got your app. Um, or if that doesn't work, if your airline doesn't have that, or like me, I flew from Newquay in Cornwall, they don't actually have that facility yet, but what they do have is um, a little uh, touchscreen device there which you can check in and they'll print out your tickets, which again is ideal, it takes seconds, all you have to do is put in your flight number. But that just takes the stress and time out of the whole process and you're straight into departure, waiting for your plane, there's no stress and hassle. Um, just so there's no delays or any embarrassing delays in um, the departure security area where you obviously have to go through, take your shoes off, etc. Walk through the um, x-ray scanner machine to make sure you're not concealing anything or taking anything um, that you're not supposed to on the plane. Is make sure that if you've got any liquids, they are travel size and they are in sealable plastic bags. Um, a lot of people still get caught out um, with this, which is silly really, because we all know now if you're traveling that you need to put these items in sealable plastic bags. If you don't, obviously all it means is that when it's picked up in the scanner, you have your bag rifled through um, and they make you put it in the bag anyway. It just saves delay, saves stress. You can sail through the whole process and then sit in the departure line with a coffee and wait for your flight. Finally, just a little bit of a, a stress-free tip as well. Now we're all eager to get on the plane, but let's be honest, the plane isn't gonna leave without us as long as we're sat in that departure lounge. Let everyone else rush towards the gate the minute the gate is uh, the flight is called for boarding because there is no need. You've got your um, place reserved. You're not gonna to have to rush. Just wait for everyone to go through, just tail in on the end. There's no stress, no hassle, straight in. And you'll find that you're a lot more rested and less stressed on the flight. Um, these are just ways which you can just take that stress out of travel. But hopefully, guys, you found this video interesting. I really hope you have. Um, if there's anything else you think I've missed or that you would like to see in another video, then leave that in the comment section below. Other than that, guys, if you are traveling this weekend or soon, hopefully these tips will have helped you. Just pack light, stick to the same color spectrum, so therefore everything mixes and matches, um, and it'll see you through a weekend, guys. It's about packing smart, um, and just making sure you covered every, every eventuality. Have an absolutely awesome week. I'm sorry about the, um, the video today. Hopefully the audio and video quality hasn't been too bad. Next week or next Thursday's video is gonna be back in the home studio, so I'll sort it out then. Um, hopefully you like what I'm doing. Now I am still on a very minimum um, subscriber base, unfortunately. I've gone from 55 to 54, so somebody wasn't happy um, with what I was doing. Um, hopefully they'll come back to me. But if there's anything that you guys think that you could give me that's constructive criticism, or anything you think I could do better to get more subscribers and leave it below. Um, I'm doing a lot better on other mediums, so I'm not really sure why I'm not really taking off here or why my videos aren't reaching the audience they are, but I still enjoy doing them. Hopefully you enjoy watching them and something um, helpful has come out of this. So thank you very much, stay awesome, and I will see you guys on Thursday for another video. Have a great week.